Welcome to One on One with Expert Flyer. I'm your host, Lisa Caslin. And you know, it's the time of year where we take stock of all the progress and maybe some of the setbacks uh, of 2018 and maybe take a look to the future uh, for some of the trends that, that will have an impact on travel. And here to talk about that with us is Kevin May. He is the uh, editor in chief of Focus Wire. Uh, and he's going to talk a little bit about the publication, but they, uh, they cover and analyze technology, distribution, and the digital economy, all of which are the backbone of the travel and tourism industry. So welcome, Kevin. Hello. How are you? Pleasure to be here. <laughs> Good to have you. Good to have you uh, across the pond right now. <laughs> yeah, up here just outside of London, it's, uh, the weather is probably not a lot better than where you are on the east coast of the US, but uh, yeah. <laughs> we're kindred spirits in terms of the weather, which is great because that's generally all we ever talk about. In the <laughs> very true, very true. And, bre and, bre and Brexit, of course. You know. that, that's right, that's right. So talk a little bit about uh, Focus Wire because you're a relatively new publication and I know you have a long, rich history uh, in the travel news business. So give us, uh, give us a scoop there. Yes, I mean, uh, personally, I've been writing about online travel and travel tech for uh, far too long, 13 years or so now, and I've been involved in a number of publications, Travolution here in the UK, uh, T-News, which many people will know, and more recently, Focuswire, which was launched in uh, November last year, 2017. Uh, and we actually recently acquired um, a team use of Focuswire. So Focus, the Focuswire is essentially a division of Focus Rights, which for uh, industry insiders, many will know, is you know probably the world's leading kind of research and events brand for anything to do with online travel. They publish many, many reports every year. They host a, a, a few really big conferences, one uh, quite recently in Los Angeles, which I was lucky to go to, and they do one in Europe in, in the May of each year. And, you know, they've been analysing and reporting on the trends that are affecting uh, you know, the online travel sector for uh, nearly two decades. So mm -hmm. uh, Focuswire is, I guess you could say, the news division of Focus Right. And, you know, we write about online travel agencies and hotels and airlines and tourism activities and car rental and all the other crazy new technology that's coming along which has an impact on both um, travelers themselves whether they're leisure or corporate and the industry itself but essentially our readers are the industry yeah 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 well we love that well that's why we we uh we have you on today uh which brings me to my first question so what do you think are some of the key trends that are affecting uh the way travelers and suppliers and those otas are connecting yeah i mean it's <laughs> I'm, I'm loath to say that it's mobile, but, you know, because people have been talking about mobile affecting the industry for a long time, mm -hmm. but it's still, it, it's, it's kind of become the cornerstone for a lot of the way um, these trends are kind of managed and are evolving from within that and out of that. Um, you know, more and more people are not just um, searching for travel using a mobile device, they're now booking it. Mm -hmm. um, which I think was a fairly big leap. You know, people were happy to look on their devices to find air tickets and hotel rooms and things like that. But now they're in increasingly booking as well. Some brands are pointing to up to two thirds of their bookings are coming from a mobile device. So there is this general um, acceptability by travellers that they feel comfortable with the actual booking part. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's one trend i think that's kind of been bubbling along for a couple of years and i think it's really important but what it means now is that um there is this kind of desire to create what you know i'm going to revert to the industry jargon here but you know it's this kind of seamless experience that that the industry thinks that travelers want and they're they're absolutely right i mean what the what the consumer doesn't care about is the device that they're now using it on one because as i said they're comfortable with it but they want to be able to pick up the phone and do one thing with it and then that experience that they've had there is connected all the way through their experience of the trip itself so whether it's the shopping part online the search part the booking part the actual getting to the airport part all that kind of stuff by the person that they bought it from, whether it's an OTA or an airline, they want that experience to be kind of um, uniform all the way through, right towards 
the end, which is the bit when they're post trip and they're sharing their wonderful experience with their friends, their family, and often feedback to the brand. So it's this kind of, um, it's yeah, it's this, it's the kind of the seamless experience which technology only technology can facilitate really you I mean you can have brands and branding but it's the technology that connects the dots between um between all of those um mm-hmm. i suppose what is is i guess it's an it's an industry inside of type thing but what they're trying to do is there are often very different businesses involved so online travel agencies are very different from the hotels and the airlines that they put you on or in mm-hmm. so there mm-hmm. is this kind of inherent difference between the two where one of them so you say if you booked a hotel on Mm booking.com you would give all your details to booking.com when you make the booking and you would expect that to just go all the way through the experience at the hotel but you know when you get to the hotel the hotel will ask you for the same information again because they don't transfer their information because you know booking.com to use the example again wants to keep the information for itself so that's that kind of disconnect that's mm-hmm. still to be ironed out it's it's you still have to give your information to different suppliers all the way along the all the way along the food chain of the experience that you're but ha- taking how, how, how how would that get would ironed that out? out i mean there's privacy um, issues well yeah yes it's privacy issues of course um certainly here where i'm from in europe we have a uh, a thing that's come to the surface this year which is called gdpr which is the a european um data protection law so yes it's about privacy and data and as we know there's been some new stories of late about people's data in hotels and things but it's more of actually a business issue and that is is that when you book with an online travel agency and you give your information whether it's your email your preferences and all those kind of things they want to what's known in our world as own the customer mm-hmm. they don't want the hotel to own the customer because they still want to be able to get a cut <laughs> well they want to get the cut but they want to be able to um sell you a hotel room again in the future rather than you become the onward loyal customer of the hotel in the future so that's it's more of a business issue that w- the reason why you have this disconnect not just because of data and privacy and things like that okay that's okay. good so if we were to talk about specific I guess, technology and applications that consumers seem to be gravitating towards to help facilitate uh, the, the, the travel, the, the decision-making process, the booking process. Is there anything that's kind of cool right now? Yeah. Sure. Um, so the first one is probably voice. Now, um, we all have one, but we've had... <laughs> I'm trying not to sound flippant, but there's a reason for the way I'm talking ironically in my voice about this and that is voice technology and you know we've got google homes and alexas and many homes many houses have them um i probably feel i say alexa again my own one sitting here is going to start chiming <laughs> up and asking me what song to play or what the weather is but um the point is is that you know the way we communicate with our voices is the most natural thing that we do you know typing on a typing on a computer is not very natural Mm-hmm. Using your finger on a um, on a, a touch device is also not very natural. But as the, as consumers and searchers and bookers of industry products, hotels, um, air tickets, and things like that, we've come used to we've become used to that form. What's happening with voice technology is that it's going right back to the basics of how we communicate. So what is starting to happen is many of these travel brands are starting to develop what you know they call them skills on alexa and things like that so yeah it's just started <laughs> it's just started saying hello <laughs> i'm not sure if you can catch that i suppose it would be funny if you could but anyway so, <laughs> um so what what is starting to happen is our own again with our own kind of acceptance of mobile technology over time i mean alexas and google homes they're kind of quirky and cute at the moment and things like that and you know you can do fun things but the skills that are being developed for them are now allowing us to search and book um, products. So there's an airline in Europe, which just today, Sun Express is a German airline, claims to be the first airline where you can book an air ticket using an, an Alexa. And this is only going to this is only going to increase as we become used to these devices being omnipresent in our lives and we communicate with them as we would do 
ironically back in the day when we used a travel agent we would walk into a travel agent and we would say hi i want to go to istanbul on sun express and they would sort you out a ticket now you just ask your alexa device so we've kind of gone full circle in a way which is quite an interesting kind of thing around uh, human behavior almost it- I love it. It's it's terrific. But I, I wonder how does that affect because you, you know these OTAs. You know, everybody is trying to, to to crack the code in terms of search, right? So yeah. does this have an impact on their search optimization practices now? Because yeah, people absolutely. search in a different way, right? When they're speaking versus typing, I would imagine, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So um, there is a lot of discussion and. I, I, I don't think anyone has particularly cracked it yet, but there is a lot of discussion about voice engine optimization, mm. which is, as you say, it's a completely different form of the way um, brands need to figure out how to get their products in front of people when they're just using their voice. And that's, you know, we're, it's a fairly kind of nascent technology still, not least because consumers aren't completely not that they're into it, but generally for asking for music and the weather and creating shopping lists. The, the next leap is buying products and just behaving and interacting with a device that sits in the corner of the room in the same way that, you know, you pick up your phone or you start typing into your laptop. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's really, really cool. Um, what about behavioral trends are there anything kind of coming coming across the transom right now that indicate particularly i guess uh, amongst millennials right um any anything that you're seeing in terms of what they want is their appetite changing or are other you know manners of enjoying a holiday kind of standing out at the moment well i i'm loath to give people younger than me all the credit but you know, often they are the, you know, there are very few people that are younger than me, of course. Uh, but you know, the, you know uh, Gen Z or Gen Z, as I must call it for the purposes of the recording, and millennials and Gen Y and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, I mean, they do think and behave in a different way when it comes to travel, just because they are what's ter- called in a terrible way digital natives rather than digital immigrants. You know, we came into the digital world rather than were born in it. Mm-hmm. Um, so in a way, it, it kind of manifests itself in a different way. So they expect everything yesterday. You know, I've got a couple of young kids. They don't, you know, they want everything 10 minutes before they asked it kind of thing, right? Yeah. But so, and this is a, again around mobile. Uh, I, I suspect it will be increasingly around voice so they want answers to everything and the ability to do everything straight away. Now, thats I don't think that's exclusive to them. I think that's a pretty big requirement from almost anybody that's connected to the digital world now. Where I think it's different is in there is this idea that they are less... Um, inclined to think about the way they travel in the same way as perhaps their parents do. So they... It's more experience-led, which is one of the, you know, the jargon terms that's being used. So, and I'm not just thinking about thrill-seeking or anything like that. They want to do things that are off the beaten track. They want to do things that their parents haven't done, or indeed, from an industry perspective, do them in a way that their parents didn't do. For example, you know, we're looking more and more towards, they are looking more and more towards private accommodation, mm-hmm. of which the providers are. Airbnb, home and away, home away, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, you know, that's why the likes of Airbnb have come along and made this mark because they've tapped into this kind of zeitgeist of a generation or a couple of generations now of new consumers that have entered the kind of uh, have entered the commerce marketplace and want to do things in a different way. Mm-hmm. So, it's it's generally um, a desire to do things different from their parents, such as private accommodation, and also the. Ex- the experience of why they go somewhere being, you know, I guess a cornerstone of why they're traveling to destination X or destination Y. Got it. Yeah. I mean, I think there, there are other uh, matters, you know, maybe from a more practical standpoint, like the expectation or the feeling that, you know, Wi-Fi as an example, shouldn't be an extra. This is something that we should all be entitled to. So I think that there. I think the airlines and and, and uh, hospitality properties out there are are really kind of tuning into that too, don't you think? 
Yeah, I, I, I would agree with you. I would also say that, again, I don't think it's just them. I think because yeah, no, you're right. you know, smart, smartphone penetration is huge across multiple yeah, yeah, generations. Yeah. Now. Agreed. And I think, you know, as any travel, I think most travelers now expect free Wi-Fi in the, in the same way that I would expect the bedside lamp to work and to get fresh towels. You know, it's a basic requirement of a hotel. And, but I mean, let, let's be, Let's be frank here, it's taken the hotel industry a long time to get their heads around the fact that they need to provide free Wi-Fi. And some still don't. But most of them realize that, you know, it can be a game changer as for when somebody as to whether someone's going to press the book button on their hotel or the one that's listed below them on Booking.com that says free Wi-Fi. So, I mean, it's taken a while. But I think they've got into that. And that may not be because of the younger generation. That may be actually because of the older generation are also saying, hang on a minute, where's my free Wi-Fi here? Right. The ones that have the money the <laughs> have the bigger that, voices. <laughs> right. <laughs> Don't you believe it? Yeah. That's it. That's I mean, it. So I, I was just going to, before we close, uh, I, I just wondered if you had any thoughts about um, artificial intelligence uh, and maybe biometrics. Is that yeah? Is that I mean, yeah, so biometrics was one of the things I was going to mention in the same uh, when we were discussing voice. I mean, it's you will see a lot of it's like the voice you know technology is 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 entering into the the kind of the vernacular of the conversations that are happening in the industry so for example another story just today so hertz rental car you can now do things with with like with your biometric data in order to receive the key or to give the key back and things like that you can go to an air there's uh dubai airport Mm -hmm. they, uh, Emirates has a tunnel that you walk through now that checks your yeah. bi various different parts of your biometric to check you in mm -hmm. and to get you boarding onto the plane. A again, these are things that are being kind of tested. There are things that they need to figure out that their passengers or their guests are comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Because I think if you... I think the industry has learned that if you throw things at people and hope it sticks, often it just falls off. You have to do, you know, in one big go. I think they've realized that you have to introduce these things in a way that gets some Gentle. degree of accessibility. Yeah. And people will come more comfortable with it. I mean, biometrics is going to be a really big leap for a lot of people because, you know, mm -hmm. I, I remember when people started being asked to pay for things with a credit card online and, you know, they would throw their hands up in horror. You know, the, the technology was exactly the same behind the scenes as it was going into the shop, but it was the fact that you were doing it online. Yeah. Lest we forget the same happened with paying for things, as we were saying earlier, on a mobile device. So there is always this kind of begrudging, not, maybe not begrudging, but this kind of, I need to figure out that this feels okay for me. And yeah. I think we're going to see that again with walking up to something that checks your irises or right. your fingerprints or any other kind of behavioral aspect of the way you walk through an airport or check into a hotel. It's going to take a while, but I think, you know, it does, you know, we were saying it doesn't seem that long ago when everyone was worried about paying for things with a credit card and a mobile device, but we all do it now. And it's, it feels like another generation, you know, 10 years or so from now. We'd be like, oh, okay, let's just look into this device and it will check me into my hotel room. Exactly, exactly. All right, so before we let you go, is there anything else we should know? Anything else that uh, that's exciting? Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I, I, I think there's a tendency not to forget that in travel, things can change very quickly. And that's not, you know, that's a really obvious thing to say, but, you know, the global economy and global events, whether that's, accidents, natural disasters have a big effect on the way people travel and they can happen at any time as we know. And data protection I think is going to really come to the fore in 2019, not least because of what's happened in late 2018 with the um, the issues that Marius and Star would have had for example and I think that's going to really make the industry and also travellers not think twice but just be slightly more aware than they were about what they're giving to brands in return for Mm -hmm. the ability to stay in a room or fly in an aircraft. I think there's going to be a little bit of, whether it'll be regulators getting involved or not, I don't know, or whether it'll just be the industry itself kind of just smartening up and realising that they need to be a little bit more explicit with what they're doing with people's data. 
Um, so that's that's there's those kind of ends of the things. But then there's the kind of insidery again, the industry stuff. I mean, we're forever talking about Google. It's the brand. Everything.